Manasi, wow. Uh, and on behalf of uh, wow, I'd like to welcome you here this evening to hear a little bit more about our beautiful woods and um, some of the reasons why wow was set up in the first place to try to protect them for future generations. Um, we've got 12 woods in Addison Parish, which is um, something I've learned since I've been on the, uh, in the group. Uh, many of them are classified as ancient woods, which technically means that they have existed since before 1600. And uh, some of them uh, are sites of special scientific interest, particularly the, the woods, the block of woods to the west of the village that has all the footpaths. Why was formed in 2020 when there was significant concern about what was happening uh, in the woods? They were being subdivided and sold. Um, and there was a fear that lotting or the subdivision of woods in itself is detrimental to the longevity and health of these ancient woodlands. But um, the firm that was, whose business model is to buy up chunks of woodland cheaply, subdivide them into small plots and then sell them on at, uh, at a huge profit. Um, they've been doing this up and down the country, came to Addisham in, in 2020, and we almost immediately uh, found that um, the tower woods, which were sold first, were being subdivided, and worst of all, fenced off with barbed wire, electrified fences, um, and so on. In the end, the SSSI woods to the west of the village um, were sold without being subdivided, and uh, WOW is in regular contact with the new owners of those woodlands. However, um, the ancient woodland tower woods um, has not been so fortunate. It's been divided into plots of five acres or ten acres, and some of the owners have erected surprisingly large buildings <coughs> in their plots under permitted development legislation uh, that allows buildings for forestry purposes. Curiously, uh, these buildings are, appear, many of them, to be linked uh, to the water mains, to electricity, they have security lights, and they've even got post boxes uh, on their gates, uh, which it's hard to square with the definition of forestry purposes. Um, I want to make it clear at this point that not all of the town's owners uh, have done these things but enough of them have to raise concerns that these forestry buildings might at some point morph into houses following a, a change of the application. WOW is working with local partners, the authorities uh, and national organisations to monitor these developments in the woods and try to ensure that they don't become uh, a residential estate. I'm talking here about Towers. And we hope that um, uh, you will help us to achieve that goal. Uh, tonight is um, really a, 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 an information evening. We hope to tell you something about the history of the woods and also focus more in more detail on the uh, current concerns for their future. So, um, without a, yes. There's room at the end for questions, uh, so if you could please uh, store up your questions until the, <coughs> the presentations have been completed. Um, we've got lots of nice good speakers tonight um, who, in the words of John Reith, to, to inform, educate, and perhaps entertain. Uh, so, starting with Jack, um, who is going to tell us uh, what ancient woodland leaves. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're presenting today in a sort of rough 
chronology of the woodland. So uh, basically starting from you know what constitutes ancient woodland, moving on towards like history and through you know medieval times, archaeology, and then into sort of more present day and current concerns. So I'm starting just by giving a brief uh, sort of overview of what we mean by ancient woodland and, and why it's important. So what does ancient woodland mean? Well, these are woods that have had woodland cover for at least 400 years, uh, but many would have had woodland cover for much longer than this too. Um, but ancient isn't the same as undisturbed woodland. So there is no such thing, especially in the UK, as you know, a completely natural woodland, because all woodlands to some extent have had some kind of human influence or management. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And, um, as we'll probably go on to talk about later on today, um, it's, it's management that actually produces the best outcomes for biodiversity um, you know, in today's context. Um, so there are two types of ancient woodlands um, that we need to talk about. Um, and the first are ancient semi-natural woodlands. And on that first map there, uh, there that's the blue shaded uh, woods. Uh, so these are woodlands that have developed naturally, but of course have been managed and used by humans over the centuries. Um, but they've had woodland cover since at least 1600 AD. And then the orange shaded woodlands on there are the plantations on ancient woodland sites. Uh, and these are ancient woodlands that have been felled and then replanted with non-native species. Um, so these conditions generally aren't as ideal as the other ones because you'd normally like there to be a lot of native broadleaf woodlands um, there um, but their soils still maintain a lot of the complexity that traditional ancient woodlands would have um, and I'll talk about what that means in a second and, and this is what I mean so uh, the advantage of having continual woodland cover over such a long period of time uh, means that the soils are disturbed less uh, veteran trees remain present in the woodland and also there's a continuity of decaying plant matter and this creates the ideal conditions for a rich range of fungi, invertebrates, uh, which in turn support a range of plants, uh, birds, mammals and so on. And you may have heard of the term an ancient woodland indicator species and uh, these are species that are strongly associated with these uh, ancient woodland habitats with continuous woodland cover. Uh, because they benefit from the unique complexity of the soil uh, and the decaying plant matter. And um, also, the presence of these plants and animals can also confirm a woodland to be ancient uh, if the historic provenance isn't so certain. Uh, so, for example, orchids uh, are often flowers uh, that kind of, they're often key uh, ancient woodland indicator plants because the unique thing about orchids is that their seeds uh, need fungi in the soil to be able to, to grow. Uh, they, they don't, if, if they don't have the particular fungi they need, then they just won't. Um, so so that's, that's the kind of relationship that we're dealing with here, in that uh, these are ancient woodland indicator species because they need those unique conditions to even be able to grow. Um, another important aspect of ancient woodland landscapes, um, which I'm sure uh, Andy in a second will touch on, is that they often retain a lot of the historic features um, indicating how they were previously managed and their previous uses um, and the relationships that our ancestors had with these woods. Uh, so for example, in, in Addison's woods, we have uh, evidence of relic boundary ditches, uh, we have tree pollarding, as you can see here, um, and then also things like hollowways, uh, which is where people have sort of grooved um, a hollow into, into the soil through their movement. Um, so we've established that ancient woodlands uh, are unique as habitats, unique as landscapes, and we know that all of Addisham's ancient woodlands are ancient actually to a large degree. So if I go back to that first slide actually. Um, so, so the ones on the left, that's the Tower Woods and then the Triple S I Woods, and then those are the woods in our parish up towards Bosington that way. And um, the shading is different, but actually all of those are ancient semi-natural woodlands. So you can actually see that all of the named woodlands are ancient to a certain extent. Um, and I, I believe there's actually 13 if you count up all the individual parcels. But this, th there's a lot of confusion about that because the parcels are very small. Um, so yeah, and, and this is a really special thing because only 2.5% of land in the UK is covered by ancient woodland. Um, and in Kent, we're actually really lucky because we're the county that has the highest quantity of ancient woodland out of any county in England. Um, and the southeast region in general, which you can sort of see from this map, 
and it contains 40% of the UK's ancient woodlands overall. Uh, but it's also increasingly recognised that the unique, these unique habitats are being increasingly threatened by development, um, especially in this part of the country where those development pressures are so strong. So given these facts, we need to recognise that in this community, in our parish, we're custodians of some of the most important habitats and landscapes in the whole of the UK. And um, everything that we're going to talk about in this meeting in some way reflects that. Um, so yes, that was just a brief introduction. And I'll hand over now to uh, Andy.